or if no one has changes or comments, then it, um, we can approve these as a slate. Does anyone have changes or comments to the minutes? So let's approve them as a slate. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Uh, yes. I'm sorry, Dave. You go I'm ahead. I'm just going to say I, I move that we approve all minutes attached to the March 13, 2002 uh, business meeting agenda. Do I have a second? Okay, Michael. Um, and no comments, no discussion. Um, all those in favor, please. All right, seven now. Okay, so let's have comments by student representatives. I see our two, um, our two representatives from the middle school back there. If you could introduce yourselves and. I'm Eva. And I'm Carter. And we're the student representatives from Cables of Middle School. This trimester is ending this Thursday, Thursday, March 15th. The grades in the portal will be closed for parent viewing on Friday, March 23rd. The basketball bonanza will be held at 6 o'clock Wednesday, March 21st. CEMS will soon be performing their spring musical, The Music Man. It will be opening on Thursday, March 22nd at 7 p.m. and will have 7 p.m. shows on the following Friday and Saturday. There will also be a 2 o'clock showing on Saturday and on the next Sunday. Spring sports are going to um, start on April 2nd. That includes lacrosse, softball, baseball, and track. Sign-ups are going on now at community services. Also in sports, this winter's sports numbers were great. There were around 200 participants, and both boys and girl basketball teams needed three teams. Next, e next week will be spirit week. Also, the last dance was great. I'd like to recognize Michael Chase, the kindness guy, for a great, inspiring speech, and Nat Jordan for being Cumberland County's spelling bee champ. Thanks, and good night. Thank you both. <coughs> okay, um, our high school students, Sasha and Abby. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, <coughs> all right, so a lot's happened at the high school. Um, First off, we got our iPads. Well, seniors get the iPads. <laughs> but everyone else did. And they are awesome. They're great. They're so helpful. Um, I'm actually reading off of them right now. And the science team won the uh, Northeastern Regional Science Bowl, I believe, uh, which is awesome. Congratulations to you guys. And uh, the prom fashion show is a week from tomorrow, which is a big fundraiser prom. So if you guys want to come, feel free. Uh, spring sports are starting um, end of the month. And what else we got? There's a trip to Quebec for the weekend. What is that? Two or three weeks, maybe? In a couple weeks. During break. April, April break. Over April break. Um, and the students who went to Costa Rica, such as myself, uh, got back two weeks ago, and it was amazing. And the students are coming here on the 28th of March for around three weeks, two or three weeks. Um, I think we're going to try and have them here for our April meeting. And that's it. All right. Well, good evening. Um, the chess team just won the state championship, so congratulations to them. Um, the Find Me One Act play just recently this weekend um, won regionals and they go to states in two weeks. Um, the Jazz Ensemble performed at the Berkeley Jazz Fest in Boston um, last weekend. Uh, there's a high school band concert tomorrow night, so anyone who's interested in that, um, I think it's around 7 o'clock. Um, seniors will start hearing back from colleges in the next few weeks, which is very exciting for all of the seniors who have applied and have been waiting anxiously to hear back. Um, and the AP senior government class will be going to Washington, D.C., um, and we're leaving next Wednesday. Um, and they will have a tour of the White House in the West Wing, among other activities. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, Abby, do you know, are there any mock trial fundraisers coming up? Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I forget where it is, but um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, is there also maybe something at um, the good table? Also, can't remember when that is. You know? <laughs> if anyone wants to buy tickets for that, they can come see me. <laughs> so, yeah, coming up too. Okay, great. Um, any questions for David? Um, not for the student representative, but I just noticed that the Item 5, recognition, luckily our student representatives did mention both the science team and the chess team, but the body of the materials mentions the speech, debate, and Cape Olympians. And since we want our agenda, which is published, to be consistent, I would just yeah. move that our, our agenda be adjusted to include... Um, that was last month. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> they came up. Can, can I, is that on TV that my foot's going in my mouth? <laughs> And you were Ill, and you yes. that meeting, so and you can leave your foot right there. <laughs> I, I would like to add one more thing. Yeah. It's a, sort of a recognition for Nat Jordan. He does have uh, his position at the States or this Saturday at the Abramson Center for the State Spelling Bee Championship. So I believe I speak for all of us when we say we wish him luck. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Great. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So let's move on to comments from the public on agenda items. Does anyone have any comments on our agenda <coughs> for anything that's listed on the agenda? Okay. Um, item uh, number five, recognition. Uh, we have uh, recognition for the science team first. If the science team would like to come up and... Um, thank you for the recognition. Um, we only have two of our teammates here today. <clears throat> There's five of us on the team, but this is Ian McInerney, and this is Charlotte Reddy, and I'm Melissa Stewart. And the other two team members we have are Paul Hammerski and our captain, Ethan Danino, and we have our coach, too, Dr. Sean Gret. Um, we competed in the Northern New England Science Bowl two Saturdays ago, March 3rd. There we went one-on-one -on -one against teams from across Maine, gaining wins to qualify for the semifinals and eventually the finals, both of which were single elimination. There are two halves of each competition lasting eight minutes with a two-minute break between for teams to sub in another player if they so choose. The competition begins with a toss-up question worth four points, which is either multiple choice or short answer, and from the categories biology, physics, chemistry, earth and space, and energy. If a team member answers the question correctly, the team has the chance to collaborate on a bonus question, which is worth 10 points. It's careful to pay attention during the competition because there are rules about everything from interrupting the moderator before the question has been read in its entirety to giving an answer before being recognized by the moderator. The Science Bowl is obviously about having a strong background in science, but it's also about street speed, strategy, and teamwork. We have a short clip to help give you a better idea of what it's like. They don't have to answer these questions, right? <laughs> Please. This is from last year's uh, National Science Bowl Finals. Uh, double elimination round number eight. Toss of question one, which is in physical science, multiple choice. Which of the following best describes a thermodynamic isolated system? W, exchanges only energy with its surroundings. X, exchanges no energy with its surroundings. Y, exchanges no mass with its surroundings. Z, exchanges nothing <coughs> that is an interrupt by A1. X. Sorry, that's incorrect. I will reread for team B. Which of the following best describes a thermodynamic isolated system? W, exchanges only energy with its surroundings. Well, X, exchanges no energy with its surroundings. Y, exchanges no mass with its surroundings. Z, exchanges nothing, whether it is energy, matter, or work with its surroundings. B1. Z. That is I'll never know. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it's Z or C, but... That 
That is correct. In any case, we're really hoping that you guys would see here the guest reader for the questions is indeed the First Lady, Michelle Obama. So she was there last year guest reading the questions. Oh, you're right. Also, at this year's event, scheduled to be the keynote speaker is the President of the United States of America. However, they have said, or the Secretary of Energy, so it could be either one. So, uh, yep, our team will be going to the National Science Bowl in Washington, D.C. from April 26th to the 30th to compete against teams from across the nation. Some of the highlights of our trip include attendance of the USA Science and Engineering Festival, a tour of the monuments in the area, a visit to the National Mall, and the keynote speech that Dr. Gret talked about, and obviously the competition itself. Thank you again. Thank you. Any comments or questions for the science team? Um, you mentioned five people. Is there a much larger science team? And I'd like to have you describe it so that the public can understand that a lot of kids in this town actually participate in the science team. And I think there's a state tournament coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, very good question. Yes, the science team actually competes in three different leagues. Uh, one of the leagues we compete in is down in Massachusetts called the North Shore Science League. Uh, we also compete in the National Science Bowl, which actually is a small team, only five, and we fielded a second team, so we only had ten students competing in that. We also compete in a competition here in Maine called the Maine Science Olympiad, which is a team of 15 people. The, uh, probably the most participation happens down in Massachusetts. We had one bus this year, I believe there were 31 kids wow. riding a bus for two hours down to Massachusetts and back. And mm -hmm. Yeah, the science team does it's quite a lot of kids, mm -hmm. quite a bit competing. And I would like to take this time to thank you guys for funding these activities. We do appreciate it and mm -hmm. try to put the funds to good use. Thank you. Well, thank I, you, Dr. Garrett. I, I think it's to be complimented, the fact that 30 kids, that's, I can't do the math, a fifth of a of a class, but high school kids that actually will compete go down to New England to compete against much larger schools. If my understanding, from my one resource, which I don't dare name, we'll get in trouble, but you do fairly well. So com congratulations. Yes. Any other comments or questions? Well, congratulations, and thank you for representing Cape Elizabeth, and good luck in Washington. We'll look forward to hearing about it. All right, and thank you, um, Dr. Garrett, for coaching and for all the hours I know that you put in um, that are above and beyond to, to uh, take this team to the level that they're at. It's a great honor for our school. So thank you. OK, we will move on now to the chess team. Do we have representatives of the chess team here? Great. Our students don't have prepared comments, so I'm going to take the liberty of describing this for you a little bit, but please feel free to ask them questions. I'm Mark Parker. I'm one of the parents of uh, one of the students, Brett Parker, one of the members of the chess team, and Colin Smith is with me also. Um, chess in Cape in recent years has been largely a community services driven activity, principally by parents. We've tried to uh, initiate some activities within the school system, but it's been with fits and starts. Um, and this year, our, our team does not actually have a teacher or coach within the school system, per se, but because these kids have been working hard at this for a number of years, they nonetheless took a team to the state tournament representing Cape Elizabeth High School. And uh, this was only the third year that CAPE has had a high school team in the chess tournament and, um, and has done very well all three years. And this year in particular, coming away with the championship competing against eight other teams. There are six high school members currently playing chess and they are among the highest rated uh, tournament players in the state. And our best chess player of all was actually competing for the science team. So we didn't even have him for this competition, and that was Ethan Danino. Um, nonetheless, the remaining players can certainly hold their own with anyone. And those players were Matthew Reale Hatem, uh, Brett Parker, as I mentioned, Ben Hansel, Robert Frichero, and of course, Colin Smith. And, um, and they went up to this competition, and it really wasn't even close. 
Um, last year they came away with second place and this year they came away with first place. And uh, even though it's a small core of people at this age that are still playing chess um, at, at, to this, to, to this uh, level of competition, it looks like we'll still have a strong team for a few years to come yet. There are some other um, students in the system that we hope will keep chess going for years to come. There are some middle st school students competing. And in fact, we did have a middle school team that uh, came in second place in its division this year. And um, through community services and some dedicated parents, we're uh, trying to still instill love of this game with our youngest uh, uh, people in the community. And there are some things going on at the elementary school level. So quite an accomplishment considering that um, uh, we don't have a large uh, bolus of people doing this and that it's largely driven by community services and parents. Uh, there are some communities that have um, a very um, robust program within their school system and yet our guys still did, held up pretty well. So I'll open it up if there are any questions. Any questions or comments? I'm just curious about when both of you started playing. How old were you, if you remember? Um, well, I first learned how to play when I was in first grade. Um, I started competing in tournaments at about third grade. Um, what I got really good, though, was I don't remember if, I don't know if any of you remember, there used to be a um, man named here named Dan DeLuca, and he ran uh, a very good chess program in the elementary school, and he kind of, um, initiated a nice bolus of kids down at the lower levels. So we've been pretty much playing ever since. Um, I started playing around like uh, uh, seven or eight. Um, I went to the chess program at Community Services. Um, uh, I also uh, participated in the program with uh, Dan DeLuca, as uh, Brett mentioned. Um, I played my first tournament um, as the uh, Maine State uh, Middle School uh, team tournament. Um, that was in, uh, I think, fifth grade. Um, that was my first tournament. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Okay, um, we'll move on to item six, communications, high school literacy. We have Jeff Shedd to speak with us about high school literacy. So Angela Shapani was going to be here tonight and apologizes that she can't be. She was beginning to not feel well towards the end of the day. <clears throat> but she's given me a script. And I'm going to stick pretty closely to the script. Um, so in the fall, uh, the literacy focus with the high school faculty was on vocabulary. Um, and, we, and Angela did two presentations to the faculty on the ideas presented in a book called Vocabulary at the Center, uh, which is a book that's recommended by the Maine Department of Education trying to decide if I want to editorialize. I won't, um, to support the work with the Common Core uh, standards that many um, states um, in America have adopted over the past year or two. Um, in the fall, Angela followed that up with a professional book group uh, with a text called Words, Words, Words by Janet Allen. Uh, there were 10 faculty members from across content areas uh, who attended the three sessions to learn concepts and strategies of teaching vocabulary. And I will say, as I wander around classrooms for the past few years, every year I can see more awareness and sensitivity on the part of content area teachers to the struggle that kids can have with reading if they don't understand the words. Um, and sometimes in the past, teachers have assumed a level of knowledge of words that may not be the case. Um, so that's really the goal, is to get our faculty more knowledgeable about how to be effective with that and how to identify when kids are struggling with their knowledge of words. Um, in addition to the vocabulary work, uh, we have been preparing for our work with Penny Kittle, who I think is a name that some of the board members will recognize, but I'm not sure it's really been explained who she is or what she's going to bring to the faculty. Uh, she's a consultant who will actually be, excitingly, be working not just with high school faculty, or middle school faculty, but with combined middle school and high school faculty, grades 7 through 12. 
Um, Penny is an experienced high school English teacher and coordinator of our district's new teacher program in Conway, New Hampshire, so she's very close to us. She's a nationally known author who's written books about effective teaching of both reading and writing for adolescents. Um, and she's done consulting work for many other districts and presents at lots of national conferences. Um, so to get ready for our work with Penny, uh, we created a task force with teachers from core content areas in English language arts, science and history, and the teachers who have been participating are Jamie Michaud and Chris Moniz from the middle school, Wynne Phillips, Sean Garrett, Melissa Oliver from the high school, as well as representatives from instructional support, Cheryl Joyce from the middle school and Elaine Brassard from the high school, and Steve Connolly um, and Meredith and I um, are part of that task force as well. So we've been doing some work to get ready. Our job as a task force was to determine a direction for our work with Penny um, and sort of to prioritize <coughs> what order we want to tackle topics. So in order to do that, we surveyed all students, grades 7 through 12, about their reading habits and how they approach reading a textbook chapter to their pleasure reading habits. We surveyed content area teachers to identify their concerns about their student skills in both reading and writing. And from this data, we determined two areas of concern, uh, content area reading strategies and independent reading on the part of our students. How do we get, encourage them to read on their own? Um, huge task. The task force met with Penny on February 28th to plan the first of our two days with her. Uh, on March 26th, uh, Penny will conduct two three-hour sessions for faculty in English language arts, history, and science, um, as well as middle school world language teachers, um, and the grade levels are mixed. It's 7 through 12 with a variety of teachers from each of those areas mixed in together. Um, and the focus on this day is on content area reading strategies. Penny's second visit in May We'll focus on structures to help our teachers help support our students' independent reading habits. Um, and my hope, Angela's hope, is that the information from these sessions will lead to areas for summer work. Um, we do think it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, the task force is very energized by having met Kenny, uh, Penny. Um, actually, in August, I don't think we mentioned, but in August, Penny presented to all the faculty, K through 12, um, about some of her work so that all faculty, even though they may not be directly involved in work with her, will be familiar with what it's all about. So we're looking forward to our work with Penny Kittle. And that's Angela's report about literacy, high school and grades 7 through 12. Any Glad questions? Answer any questions. Um, just trying to clarify for the public, you mentioned high school literacy, but it's, it's clear that the middle school is substantially involved in this project as well. Is that correct? Absolutely correct, yes. With respect to Penny Kittle, yes. Um, yes. Um, how does this task force relate to, if it does, to our um, proposed addition of a K through 12 literacy person? How does this interrelate and assist or... What's the connection? Um, wh I think, do you want to answer that, Meredith? Or? Oh, okay, I mean, I would say that the connection is really to begin to give some direction. I think we anticipate that um, even, I think we anticipate, although there, it's, it's to be worked out, that even with um, addi the addition of a K through 12 literacy coordination position, that we hope that our work with Penny will continue so that we can sustain that, um, can begin to provide some direction. Um, and then really the role of the K through 12 literacy person is to kind of weave together the various initiatives that we have in literacy, I would say, that have begun with Tammy and Claire work, uh, Tammy Landrigan and Claire Madrigan, uh, I'm getting that. Uh, Mulligan? Mulligan, yes. Claire, Tammy Mulligan and Claire Landrigan, or maybe it's the reverse. Um, <laughs> I was counting on you. So, <laughs> um, that the, that the K through12 literacy coordinator will be there to sort of weave that together and begin to op help teachers really understand how to deliver the, the messages to, 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 to um, continue the messages on a day-to-day -day basis um, 
and to help with more daily, weekly reinforcement as necessary. Um, and also to help teachers understand, um, to, to see teachers, other teachers come in and teach, teach um, effective literacy strategies and those sorts of things. So it's kind of a, a marrying together of um, the work that we've done. Um, it is exciting because both, both of these layers of work do knit together um, grade levels across schools. So Tammy and Claire, I won't try their last names because I'll get, Tammy and Claire are working really K through six. Um, Penny has more of a specialty working with older readers, so she's going to be working with our seven through 12 teachers. I, I guess I would just add, I think that's a great explanation. Um, for me, I think, you know, in, in coming in and talking with administrators even before the start of this school year, the work that's been done was very exciting and was starting to gain some momentum, but, but it's become clear, I think, through this process that, that it needs continued narrowing so that it's sort of streamlined K through 12, but also that so there's someone local in the district who mm -hmm. has the responsibility to kind of shepherd the work. I, I appreciate the last point in particular for continuity of to use a medical term, continuity of care or continuity of learning. I think that's critical. And one last question, Jeff, because yep. it's, it is an area I'm, slight, I'm somewhat interested in. You had a heavy, heavy emphasis on reading, but I'm assuming that literacy includes writing, including vocabulary, yes. content, and so forth. I assume that will be part of this program as well. Yes, ab absolutely. And, and Penny is really equally adept um, at either and has written books about both and presents nationally about both, which is one of the reasons we were attracted to her. Um, because we were limited to two days this year in work with her, we had to decide on a starting place. Um, and because there have been other aspects of things connected to reading that we've um, been working with our faculties around, that seemed to be the logical place. But the anticipation is that sometime next year we'll begin to get into the writing piece of it as well. Because one thing, one of the things that she emphasized uh, to the, at the meeting last week is how interrelated those two skills are. Um, effective readers are better writers, um, and good writers are better readers. Um, it's difficult to untangle them. Well, I appreciate the addition because I, I think the combination is something that that is an area we need to work on this district. I'm glad to see that both of them connected. Yeah, Kate. I'm interested in um, the world language teachers in this process. Right. I wouldn't have thought that world language would be. Um, so help me understand that. Mm -hmm. um, our world language teachers. K through 12 are very enthusiastic and like to learn everything about everything. And really, there is a tremendous amount of overlap, um, particularly in certain areas, for example, vocabulary instruction. In fact, there is a lot of work that says that um, uh, world language teachers are actually <clears throat> some of the most skillful vocabulary um, teachers because they can't assume a level of knowledge that content area teachers do. Um, I, certainly, kids do a lot of reading, albeit in foreign languages, um, but the skills are the same. Um, they do writing, but the skills are the same. Uh, the middle school foreign language teachers are going to be part of this. The high school teachers would be, um, but it's conflicting with some other priorities in t related to assessing our seniors and some other things. And so the timing was just unfortunate for them. So I expect that they will jump on board eagerly uh, when, when the next opportunity arises. And I would think that it's an amazing connection. I, now I understand it. I mean, words come America. In, there's so many um, Latin words, prefixes, suffixes that will help extend world language as well as understanding uh, regular language and comprehension. Yep. It's great. It's yep. exciting. Good. I think that piece too of sort of common vocabulary, common terminology, again, sort of looking K-12, that piece also speaks to the need for involvement of teachers of other content areas. And world language is a great example. They start with our students in third grade. So they're very connected to the language development process to include reading and writing um, for our students. <coughs> Anyone else? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Okay, um, we'll move on to the vision and mission update. Merida. Oh, I thought the board members were going to give this oh. update. <laughs> <laughs> Why 
Um, Jeff, we hope, I'm, smi I'm smiling. Mary and I are smiling. Um, the Vision and Mission Work Group met for a couple of hours this afternoon. The Vision and Mission Work Group has met um, for a half day last week, a couple of hours the week before, and put in time um, during vacation reading all of the stakeholder input from the sessions that were held with faculty, with students, with community members, with um, board members. Is that all? I'm missing somebody. Students? Did I mention students? That may be everyone. Um, and we are very close. We think we've identified a vision statement, but we don't want to provide the vision statement without the context of the mission statement. Um, this afternoon, we wound up with a couple of slightly different versions, um, but we are probably a, a few words apart, really, in my estimation, of a draft mission statement. Um, Again, we had hoped timeline-wise to bring that back to you tonight, but I, but I think the selection of the words is important enough that it's no, you don't want to force the process. Um, so we may ask you at some point for a special business meeting or to add this perhaps to a workshop agenda um, for another scheduled meeting just to bring you the draft because we would still like to go out to receive um, feedback on the draft from all of those stakeholder groups again and try to finalize this prior to the end of the school year, certainly. So May, if we could. Anything you could add? No, just um, thank you to all the members of the team. We have a, a the team that's working on this includes um, community members, teachers, administrators, um, board members, and Meredith, and am I forgetting anybody? No, um, and they, they have given quite a bit of time and energy, and there's a lot of, I'll use the word passion, mm. behind the work. Mm. Um, that's a word that, that um, keeps keep coming back to. There's a lot of passion in this work, and it's a great group of people who are giving lots of hours and a lot of enthusiasm, and you know, it's been very fulfilling work to flesh out um, the mission and vision um, and and use the you know the data uh, that's been given to us by um, all of those stakeholders to inform this decision. There were so many common themes that ran through um, each meeting with each stakeholder, and so um, I think we're close. And um, I'll look forward. I think we're all looking forward to showing it to the board and. Um, getting your your take on it, and Elizabeth was has been on that committee um, along with myself and, and Meredith. So, um. I, I would just like to add that it's been really exciting to be a part of that committee, and that I love the enthusiasm of everybody in the room. Passion absolutely describes it, but it's it's just really wonderful to be a part of that group and the community members and everybody just bringing so much enthusiasm. I know. To this process. Yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, I would say we've had no difficulty identifying the common themes. Our difficulty is in uh, narrowing our word choice to, to call out um, a statement that we think will resonate with all of the stakeholder groups. Right. Um, but it is definitely an enormous investment of time and energy, and it, it is a great group of people to be working with. So thank you to all of them. May I ask you a, qu a question? Mm -hmm. um, so, I'm not, I haven't been participating, and so I'm very excited to, to learn more about your work. So I, but I'm wondering whether I can put you on the spot a little bit and ask about what those themes that are emerging are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I've heard, that, I've heard that come out of this group before I, in, in, in other contexts. I've heard that you know, what, one of the things that's exciting is that from, from the community, from, from, from parents, from uh, non-parents, from faculty, from students, we're hearing a lot of the same kinds of themes, but I don't have a very good sense of what those are, except for what I've learned in my focus group when I participated in one of those evenings. But so, is there anything you can share about what what those themes are? It doesn't seem fair. I, I know it doesn't <laughs> quite seem fair, but I I think part of, part of what we've talked about as a group, at, um, not today's meeting, but at our last meeting, was making sure that we made copies of all of the stakeholder input available um, at, at the same time that we roll out the draft vision and mission, because we think that will allow other people to see why we moved in the direction that we've moved with the vision and mission. Um, it, you know, I I think that it's, it's certainly not a departure from the work that we've been doing with respect to the fact that people still believe in a solid academic foundation. 
um, in preparing students to be successful in, in um, whatever path they choose to go down. I think that there's also a recognition, though, that success comes in many forms and that we need to be thoughtful about um, respecting the individual talents and differences um, that we see in our students, that we need to be mindful of the fact that the world they're entering is ever-changing, um, uh, that they're part of a much larger community than the local community, and um, that the um, underlying skills, sort of your internal compass, for lack of a better term, um, you know, your confidence, your um, resilience, your ability to think critically and problem solve are also integral to um, building a successful future. Okay. Well, if that was an unfair question, <laughs> it was a very good answer, so thank you. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. We have to watch the tape to see if that's reflected in my... <laughs> no, you hit all, that, all the high points, I think. Okay, so any other questions around mission and vision? Uh, we'll move on to retirements and resignations. Meredith? So I only have one retirement to announce, and that is um, that we received a letter from Dwight Ely at the high school announcing his retirement at the end of this school year. Okay. Any questions about that? It was very sad to um, mm -hmm. see that resigna resignation. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we'll be able to speak later, but... Um, yeah. He's worked, he's an amazing teacher. Yes. I admire him greatly. Yeah. I admire him greatly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, are we going to be able to speak later? Um, I would assume that we'd be able to speak um, in the May meeting, I think, is when we recognize our retirees. Okay. And I will be able to speak. We'll make sure that we're. Just so Dwight doesn't stay awake at night, I would have nice things to say about Dwight. <laughs> 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 it's been a pleasure to be on the opposite side of. You've been in negotiations yes, with him. Yes, and he's yes. been on my side. I, I really enjoy him. Yes. Okay. Are school board members typically invited to the, any kind of like retirement? Usually, yes. Put on by the. Oh. Yes. Um, in the no past, part. that's been the case. So. It might be an opportunity for. I know that's an opportunity too. And then for new board members, we also um, have a meeting. It's usually the May meeting, I believe. So it may be the June meeting. I'll have to um, look that up. But um, towards the end of the year, one of our meetings is the meeting where we recognize um, all of our teachers who are moving on or who are retiring and um, you know, offer our thanks. And we have a little reception as well. So yeah. that would be the perfect opportunity for people who would like to say something about anyone who's retiring because we have someone in our audience tonight who's Hiring as well and will be missed tremendously <laughs> um, and has been a huge part of our community um, that I know we'd like to recognize as well. So with that being said, we'll move on to item D, which is Meredith's report. Okay, so I'm going to stick with the literacy theme initially just to um, say that Tammy and Claire, last names somewhat <laughs> known, um, mm -hmm. have been in the district for the last two days. They worked yesterday with the K through 6 assessment task force at Pond Cove, um, sort of reviewing the work that's been done to date, planning for next steps, and doing some examination of data and really delving into um, the Common Core and um, looking at how the Common Core aligns with our current curricula and what other work might need to be done in that framework. Um, and then today they met with teams at the middle school, all of our fifth and sixth grade teachers um, worked with them today, uh, doing similar work, but really focused um, on middle school and um, the age and stage of, of the students that they're working with. Um, and Linda Alfiero, from Pond Cove has helped to coordinate that work across the two schools. So I appreciate that work. And I have to say, um, for me, sort of in and out of the sessions, um, both yesterday and today, it's um, nice to hear, and use that word again, enthusiasm, the enthusiasm that teachers have. Um, I think the confidence they have in Tammy and Claire to sort of give them good direction and provide them with um, responsive feedback on sort of the challenges and dilemmas they may be facing in their classroom. Um, today, um, some of the 
fifth and sixth grade, well, I was with the sixth grade teachers when they were looking at um, how to, their evaluation, their student evaluations and assessments and, and receiving some feedback about that. And it was a really healthy exchange and full of laughter and um, again, just a real comfort with the process. So that's a good thing. That's, we, we're much better able to grow when we're comfortable. Uh, let's see, we also have in the PLC realm um, <laughs> some work going on. The middle school, Pond Cove started, um, I think right before February break, a uh, leadership seminar um, that Jane and Tom are leading, and the middle school started that just after break. Um, and Steve, uh, Connolly, and Jane are leading a seminar, uh, teacher leadership uh, basically being the theme. So I think we have eight or so people at the middle school, and roughly that number at Pond Cove, I'm not entirely sure. Um, participating. Meredith, we just, for the audience, Please. we're now used to the word PLC. Professional Learning Community. Just a short explanation, what it? Yes. <laughs> um, so uh, again, I think schools, when many of us started teaching, tended to be places where you worked more in isolation and you went into your classroom and you did the work independently with your students and then you went home at the end of the, you closed your door, got your work done and you went home at the end of the day. Um, schools today and what the research tells us about um, the best, the most successful schools and where um, student growth tends to be the highest are schools in which teachers work collaboratively, meaning they work in teams, they work across um, disciplines, across grade levels, within disciplines, within grade levels, depending on um, what task they're working on, to really look at student work, to talk about their practice, to think through how to approach challenges and problems that, that they may be seeing, um, again, to improve outcomes for kids. Thank you. Let's see, I'm going to let Michael talk about budget when we get to <laughs> workshop updates, but that process continues. Uh, I also had the opportunity to attend last week the career fair at the middle school, which is a great, great event um, coordinated through, um, largely by Gail Schmader, our volunteer coordinator, but with support of certainly lots of our faculty and administration and the middle school parents association. Um, but uh, professionals, um, people working from the community and the larger community are invited in and students have the opportunity to choose some sessions and go around to different sessions to hear about the careers these people are participating in. Um, some great questions. I happened to sit in on a session with a gentleman from Southern Maine Community College talking about forensic science, which was very engaging for everyone in the room. Um, a young man who is a um, uh, computer game designer, uh, an attorney, again, just a wide variety of um, career options. So certainly middle school is a great time to expose students to the many <coughs> opportunities that exist out there. Anything you would add to that, John? Another very popular session since iPads rolled out uh, last week was the app development session where I didn't see it. everyone was sort of huddled around and talking excitedly back and forth. So um, a great day. Let's see. The High School Parents Association tonight was sponsoring um, a stress management tips and techniques session um, called Calm, Cool, and Collected, something which we all certainly can learn from. I was able to attend last night, and Kate was there as well, um, a program called Hear Our Voices. It's been going on for a few years, but sponsored by our World Language Department, and this year in coordination with our English Language Learning Program. And there were students, current students, former students, um, students who are exchange students, and um, a parent who are on a panel representing um, the nations of Iran, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Italy, and Germany talking about their experiences in this country, contrasting some cultural pieces. Food was a very popular question from the audience, um, as well as sort of the educational experiences between um, America and their sort of home nations. 
really well attended event. And tomorrow night at Pond Cove, there is a presentation about the social thinking curriculum by Mich <clears throat> Michelle Garcia Winner. Um, I'm forgetting the presenter's name right now, but she is a main specialist in the field of autism, and that presentation is from 6 to 8 tomorrow evening. And on Thursday, Pond Cove's busy this week. Um, there's also a um, program called Views and Voices, which involves world language, media, center, and art. Um, and that is from 6 to 7.30 on Thursday. So again, you'll have an opportunity to see some great work and hear um, some performances from the students. What have I missed? The coffee chats, I forget what I've called them, community coffees um, with the superintendent. One was scheduled for this Saturday, the 17th. That is postponed to next Saturday, the 24th, still at 9 a.m. in the community um, room, community center community room. I think that's it. Um, Lucia Reardon. Lucia Reardon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Where iPads come in handy. <laughs> the um, coffee, do you have a, a theme that you'll be at our something at the top typically of typically the agenda is open but i would hope that i will have an opportunity to talk a bit about vision and mission on that day mm -hmm. um, for people who are able to attend great anyway. will you be discussing the mission and vision theme <laughs> I will be Unveiling. talking certainly in, <laughs> in broad terms yes <coughs> just check yeah. questions comments no? Okay. Um, then let's move on to new business. Uh, item number 7A, consideration to approve the class of 2012 project graduation committee fundraising efforts in the amount of approximately $20,000 according to board policy, DF-R, um, fundraising. Um, do I have a motion? Yes, I move that we approve the class of 2012 Project Graduation Committee fundraising efforts in the amount of approximately $20,000, according to board policy DF-R. Okay. Do I have a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, any questions or comments or concerns? Okay. All those in favor? Um, Meredith, did you have something you wanted to say about project graduation? Or? Uh, well, no, other than this is a tremendous fundraising um, undertaking. It's, I don't even know how many years this has been going on in the community, but um, certainly a great benefit to graduating seniors and um, a way for the community to know that those students are in a safe place um, at the time of graduation. Yeah, and for those in the audience who don't know, uh, Project Graduation is a fundraiser, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, this is my first year with a child going through this, um, but it's a fundraiser. They raise funds to um, put the seniors on a bus at 6 o'clock in the evening, and they take them to a destination unknown um, to them or to really anyone in the public, um, and they have a social evening. They are chaperoned, and... Um, sort of off together with their class uh, until early in the morning, like 5 a.m., is that correct, uh, when they are brought home. Um, and it is a way to keep students safe that evening. I think the, the program was developed many years ago when there were several drunk driving incidents that happened in the state of Maine, and I don't remember, maybe seven kids died? Does anyone know? I think there were seven deaths in one year and Project Graduation started here in Maine and is now a national program so we are continuing on with that and I think we've done this for many many years and um, it's been a great success and our thanks to all of the parents who spend months and months and months and you know even up to a year planning this evening for our seniors to honor them um, for, um, uh, you know, and keep them safe. So um, that's all I, I know to say, really. Kate? Um, there's no, this. <laughs> well, there's no te um, telephones or iPads or computers on the bus. 
am I, I'm right about that? That the kids go together as a group, um, and most of them have been together since kindergarten, mm -hmm. and they're together the whole night with each other face to face. Um, and I think that alone is pretty special. Yeah, yeah, it'll be the last time they'll be together until their 10 year, 15 year reunion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's a, it's a great opportunity, a very nice thing that the community does for the kids. And the, the fundraising is tremendous. Um, it's a, it is a tremendous undertaking, but well worth it to keep the kids safe. So um, let's move on to item number B, consideration to approve Cape Elizabeth Robotics Team travel to the VEX World Competition in Omaha, Nebraska, uh, March 15th through 17th, 2012. Um, if someone's going to make a motion, it should be to the VEX National Championship in Omaha. Okay. Okay. Error. Okay. So strike the word world and add national. Thank you. And Joe, were you ready to make a motion? I was ready to make a motion. Great. I was going to hold off to see what Nadia had to say to make sure she was adding extra words. No, no. Uh, <laughs> she switched out a little. That's right. Here's the page that that you have to read, Joe. <laughs> I move that we consider to approve the Cape Elizabeth Robotics Team travel to the VEX National Competition in Omaha, Nebraska. March 15th through 17th, 2012. Um, any question? Or let's have a second, actually. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Anyone second it? Okay. John? Um, any questions or concerns? I just had one clarification. I know this is the one where there will be no school staff chaperoning, and I know you sent us in the notes the, uh, the, the relevant policy in part. I don't know the normal, but Will the uh, parents sign um, some sort of waiver releasing us of, because we're not chaper, uh, school staff won't be chaperoning, so I didn't understand if there was a different process. Uh, school staff are not chaperoning, but the parents who are chaperoning have been basically through a kind of pre-trip orientation and are approved as volunteers by the school district. Okay. Um, because they are traveling as representatives of the school district and traveling with school equipment, I felt it was important for the board um, to approve them, approve the trip, excuse me. Okay. Any other questions? David? Uh, just to clarify, I, I assume that because they are school representatives, it is covered by a insurance policy. That's correct. And secondly, I doubt that there is releases because they're invalid as a matter of law anyways. There are not releases because we believe they are representing the district and are therefore covered by our insurance. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? Anyone? No? All right. Um, all those in favor? Seven up. All right. Next, consideration to approve the proposed mock trial team trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico National Mock Trial Competition, May 2nd through 6th, 2012. Do I have a motion, please? David? I would move that the board approve uh, the proposed mock trial team trip to Albuquerque, New Mexico, national in Albu Albuquerque, New Mexico, the national trial mock trial competition from May 2nd through the 6th, 2012. Okay. Do I have a second, please, Michael? Okay. Any questions or comments, concerns? No. Just Great. Just good luck to both of our teams, I guess I would add. Um, all right. All those in favor? Let's have a no. All right. Item number D, consideration to approve 2011-2012 um, budget adjustment to reallocate high school athletic stipend funds in the amount of $8,693.76. Um, do I have a motion, please? Joe? Sure. I move that we, we consider to approve the 2011-2012 budget adjustment to reallocate high school athletic stipend funds in the amount of $8,693.76 for the memorandum of the athletic administrator attached. Great. Um, do I have a second? Elizabeth? Um, and Meredith, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. The um, positions that we're talking about are, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong page right now, um, but are the tennis coaching positions. 
And um, when these positions were approved, they were approved at the sort of varsity level and assistant levels. There has been, um, with the decision of the coaches, sort of a reconfiguration of those hours based on availability of the individuals involved. Um, so because one of the coaches couldn't commit to the full 154 hours, the adjustment has been made to sort of put the hours with the correct individuals, but the total cost for the tennis program coaches has not changed. It's just that each individual is getting a different amount of money. Okay. Any questions or concerns or comments? David? Just a minor question. Uh, it, it, it doesn't just involve a reallocation of money. It does involve one person becoming head coach and the head coach becoming sort of an assistant to both? Or am I misreading that? The yes, that, that, you're correct. Um, Andy Strout had been the varsity coach for both boys and girls and had two assistant coaches. Um, because one of the assistant coaches couldn't fulfill the full obligation of the assistant coaching role, the other a former assistant coach has been made a head coach and she will be taking over as the girls' varsity coach, Andy will be the boys' varsity coach, and the remaining individual will be the assistant to both teams. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, all those in favor? Um, next we have a slate of um, nominations uh, for co-curricular and staff um, and athletic. Uh, could I have a motion to approve the slate, please, David? I move that we approve uh, the listed athletic and co-curricular staff nominations that are set forth in 7E of, our, of the school board business meeting agenda dated March 13, 2012. Okay. Do I have a second? Any questions, concerns, comments about our slate? No. All right. All those in favor? Okay. 7 0. Okay. Um, consideration to approve the 2012 2013 academic year calendar as presented. Um, you have a copy of that in your packet. And if you remember correctly, this is um, the calendar that. Um, uh, this is calendar B, which is the calendar that includes two breaks, uh, a break in February and a break in April. So it's a more tradition, it's the more traditional calendar. Um, and I think we did talk with Meredith a little bit about continuing to explore in our last meeting, to continuing to explore the, um, the proposal A. Um, and um, I think there were a few issues with with that for the coming year. But, um, so do I have a motion to approve the proposed 2012-2013 academic year calendar as presented, David? I move that we approve uh, the 2012-2013 academic year calendar as attached uh, to our school board business meeting Agenda of March 13th, 2012. Okay. Do I have a second? Oh, Joe. Okay. Um, and any discussion, comments, uh, yep. Michael? Um, I just noticed this, but uh, we, we might want to review this because if you look in, the, for example, the month of October, it looks like for a lot of the months there's a week missing. Or if, um, so I'm not sure if it was just a formatting. In other words, after the fifth, it goes to the ninth. Uh, unless I'm on a different. The sixth would be Saturday, seventh Sunday, eighth Sunday. Monday. It's only five-day weeks. Okay. It's a five-day calendar instead of a seven-day calendar. Uh, five-day week calendar. Okay. It's kind of weird looking. Gotcha. Thank you. David. Um, since I was not, I, 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 the one meeting I missed seemed to have everything done in my absence, which probably tells me something, but um, not only were, were boards appointed and things done, and that's why I made the mistake about 
speech debate, I noticed there was some discussion as to why one versus the other. And a, a short explanation I think would be helpful because I wasn't there and because it might be for people who didn't see it, but the non-traditional calendar seemed like the better idea to me, but there was obviously some reasons why we picked the tradition, why it's being recommended we predict the traditional calendar. So could I have them? Sure. Um, the most critical reason is that right now by legislation, our calendar can have no more than nine dissimilar days to the Community Technical Education Center, so in our case, paths. So we have to have at least, um, the majority of our days have to be in common. There is legislation pending to have that change to no more than five days that are not in common. Um, I think for this district that would be challenging. Certainly we would want to honor um, the students attending paths and find ways to um, help them get to their program on days that the program was in session. But because there are something like 19 sending schools to paths, it becomes very complicated and could limit districts in setting up professional development opportunities, among other things. Um, so one, legislatively, <laughs> legally, we're sort of bound right now to this calendar structure. Um, I would say the other factor and one of the things that came through in the feedback, while the feedback was fairly evenly distributed, I think there was a concern that it would be difficult for this, for if we were the only district that were to move down that road. And um, it was my understanding from the board that they would like me to explore the possibility of a regional move to um, a calendar with a March break, um, in part because um, there are family member considerations for some of our staff who might have children attending schools in other districts. There was a sense um, that for um, parents that community um, child care opportunities would be more, easier, more easily attained if there was a similar calendar with other districts. So I think it was a, an opportunity to give some more time to explore those possibilities. Uh, if I may comment, the first one is answers the question for this year. The second one, I understand and have read the feedback, and those were all concerns, but for the record, I, I think that the primary goal is what, is what is the best academic and educational product we can produce. And my gut and my limited reading to date indicates that it's the other alternative. It may not be possible, but I think that should, my view is that should be our primary goal. And parents and a parent of a child that needs child care and everything else, uh, I'd rather have better education and I'll figure out the other things. Um, I believe there was also the consideration that during the February break statewide, especially at the high school level, there's a lot of state meets and competitions that um, happen during that week. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, the it, it's a, that's a good point, but... Right. I, it's a it's a very good point, but I know um, there are very again I'll just state it's and I don't want to go over a debate that happened when I wasn't here, but there are re I can understand those reasons. But as much as I love athletics and believe it or not, I did four sports in high school. I still think academics is the most important thing. Well, I think it's not just athletics; it's all the other teams that have been presenting before us. They also I it's an open week in the calendar for I, all of them. I understand that teams include chess teams and science teams. Oh, okay, because they're not athletics. Well, I, somebody was on a chess team. I call it athletic. Long, John. I just wanted to to add also, David, because you weren't here, that 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 um, the last time Meredith gave us some. Um, idea about the feedback that we that we got around the proposal, which was split exactly split 50-50. I, I did read. Okay, you saw that. So, you know, despite the fact that this is a big change and it does have a, an impact on all of these um, issues, there were quite a number of, of people in the community who saw, I think, the academic benefit of the of the of the switch. So. Um, we're moving forward with the traditional calendar for next year, but I, I, but I think. The community has expressed a willingness to take a hard look at this issue. I, I appreciate that, John. That's what I'd like to hear. Thank you. I think that's true. So any other comments or questions? Okay. All right. Thank you. So, um, all those in favor? Okay. 
Okay, so consideration to adopt um, the 2012 school board goals as presented. Do I have a motion, please? Joe? Sure, I move that we consider to adopt the 2012 school board goals as presented. Okay, do I have a second? David? I would second, but modify the motion to adopt rather than to consider to adopt. Okay. All right. Is that a, are you? That's okay fine. With that? okay. Just be intent, Nicole. I mean, I'm a lawyer, whatever. I know, I know. So, um, for the public, I will read through the school board goals. We <clears throat> agreed upon seven goals in our February meeting. It's taken us. Um, or actually, it, yes, it was early February that, that we met. We had a retreat and um, came up with seven um, goals. Uh, number one, to review and sponsor a school budget that maintains vital programs and services within the, the district. Number two, to successfully negotiate four separate contracts. We have four separate contracts out right now. Um, administrators, EdTech 2 and 3, um, which is one bargaining unit, EdTech Ones, and administrative support, which is another bargaining unit, and maintenance, bus drivers, food service workers, and custodians. Um, our goal number three is to support and endorse an updated and revitalized district mission and vision statement that reflects the values and expectations of the Cape Elizabeth community. And has, as Meredith has um, spoken to this evening, we're well underway um, with that work. Um, number four, utilize the updated mission and vision work to begin the process of creating a strategic plan for the district to be used to guide the direction of the district for um, the upcoming years. Number five, explore district topics during workshops and business meetings, including A, school to school transitions, um, B, teacher slash administrator evaluations, and C, curriculum alignment school to school. Number six, create an online district report card or an annual report that includes agreed upon benchmarks to measure the district's performance. And number seven, initiate an audit, an audit of the Cape Elizabeth School Policy Manual. And that work has begun, um, begun this week, actually. Um, we will, um, assuming these goals are agreed upon and adopted, we will continue to update the public on how we're doing um, with each of these individual goals. Uh, so any questions around the goals from the board or comments, David? Uh, I just wanted to note for the public, first of all, I agree with these goals. I think they're wonderful. But I think people have to realize these are very ambitious goals. I think they're achievable. But they're ambitious in two ways. One, we have limited fun we're, we're getting substantially less funding this year from the state slash federal government. And some of the less financial but equally important topics, for example, create an online district report card, explore, explore district topics on and five on those major items. These are fairly important and tough topics to accomplish in a year. I want the public to understand that willing to do it and we believe we'll achieve it but this is an ambitious but I think ultimately extremely beneficial set of goals. I agree. I mean it will be an important year for sort of st setting um, the path for coming years uh, and um, it's an exciting it's an, an exciting year to be on the board particularly um, with a new superintendent and to be doing this work in conjunction with Meredith I think. Um, you know, there's a lot of energizing and interesting work um, on our goals to do, so that will um, define the district. Any other comments or concerns? Okay. So, um, Michael? Yeah, I, I would just like to say um, many of these goals are, are school board um, directed uh, initiatives where um, last year, the school board and the district leadership team identified uh, literacy and professional learning communities as our two primary uh, long-term um, goals, and those those have not changed. And our desires to uh, you know to see those goals um, implemented and realizing is those are multi-year goals. So that's why those remain our two primary goals. Where these goals, uh, many of these are more. A school board uh, directed and what I would call a few or more uh, operational such as 
uh, negotiating uh, the contracts and um, you know review and sponsoring the, the school the school budget. Thank you for pointing that out, Michael. I appreciate that. Just a quick question for Michael: is, is what you're doing, Michael, is pointing out these are goals for the school board as opposed to goals district. for the school district, mm -hmm. which I think is an important distinction for people to understand. And I appreciate you, Mike, pointing that out. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? No. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Thank you. Committee reports. Uh, Michael, is there anything you want to say around finance? Uh, sure. Uh, we had the first uh, budget, uh, actually uh, this second budget workshop and the first workshop, the superintendent introduced uh, a proposed a budget for the 2012-2013 um, school year. We had our workshop, um, our last workshop focused on uh, salaries and benefits, instructional support uh, and staffing at all departments. Uh, our next meeting um, we will target uh, capital improvements, uh, community services, facilities and maintenance, transportation, professional development, co-curricular and athletics. That will be on March 20th. And then the March 27th workshop uh, will target uh, remaining items and uh, many of the revenue drivers, state, uh, local funding. So if the public, if you do have an interest in those um, Areas, uh, please attend the workshop, or if you're unable to attend, uh, feel free to submit questions uh, uh, to the school board. And um, I think those are the only items I had regarding the uh, budget. Um, I, I, I didn't catch, did you happen to mention that the meetings are taped, so if people want to... Um, I did not, I did not mention that. They are, they are taped um, and available, I presume, on the website under uh, the, there's a budget section on the website that all the materials presented um, are accessible. Great, thank you, Michael. Um, and policy, John? Sure. Uh, so, in, in policy, consistent with our board school board goal number seven around um, the the audit of our policy manual, we met uh, yesterday morning very very early. Um, with Ann Chapman from Drummond Woodson, who's our, um, who is an expert on uh, school board uh, or school district policy. Um, and um, after her initial review of our, uh, of our policy manual, we discussed uh, a core set of policies um, which are required by law or recommended uh, by Drummond Woodson as uh, policies that we should have in place. Um, and talked about a process of, of reviewing those policies. Um, many of our policies have not had review um, in, a, in a number of years, and, and there's also a sense that the, the policy manual uh, at times gets into areas that you know, ought, ought to be governed by administrative practice as opposed to, to by school board policy. So um, that's the, the beginning of that process. Um, uh, we also reviewed a, a policy that was in front of the, um, the, the committee uh, and was on, on track to come back to the board for second reading, which was policy GBEBB, um, which you all know to be staff conduct with students. Um, we had some vigorous debate about the policy based on the recommendations um, that came from Ann Chapman, and um, that policy is now not before the board tonight, and but will be probably by our next board meeting. Maybe by our next board meeting. Yeah, it's tricky because the policy committee meets, <coughs> meets the day too before. soon, right? So it might right be before. The okay. Yeah. Um, so the committee will be reviewing the proposal from Drummond Wilson to be involved in um, in that audit process and um, that's how we're moving that forward. So thank you. Any questions or concerns? David? Um, not a concern. I just wanted to clarify that I think it's important to realize that the uh, um, policy that John mentioned is being uh, further discussed because uh, it was determined to be vitally important to get the actual administrators and teachers involved in that process. 
as opposed to a legal issue or the debate was not much of a debate in the sense that we, it was determined that it was such a critical matter that we needed to get the people who actually do it involved in the process. That's and I good think point. That's a, Thank you, David. That's a good point. Okay, any other questions, concerns, comments? Michael, did you raise your hand? I, I did, Mary. Thank you for noticing. Um, <laughs> uh, I just had one more committee update when, when it was appropriate. Pardon me? Uh, another. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, one, uh, I wanted, I'm the liaison uh, to CIF and just wanted, uh, we've had uh, monthly meetings with CIF and for those uh, new to the district or maybe new uh, to the school system, CIF is the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation and this is a big year uh, for CIF. It's the 10 year anniversary and uh, several of the programs you may hear we discuss at the school board meetings from iPads in the high school to the Achievement Center. Uh, to the math lab, to daily five that's being implemented at Pond Cove, social thinking, uh, professional learning communities. Uh, CIF has either provided the seed money for these programs or in many cases, uh, you know, the entire funding for it. So uh, I'd like to thank CIF and uh, many of the volunteers and donors in the community. Um, and as part of the 10 year anniversary, they're gonna be um, reaching out to the community to, to reintroduce uh, CIF and um, more of a, a real-time um, update. This is the second year CIF is doing rolling grants. Historically, there were uh, two grants uh, cycles for the year, but this, uh, starting last year, they did a rolling grant where um, not only teachers, but administrators, anyone involved with uh, the Cape Elizabeth School District could uh, apply for grants on um, uh, a monthly basis and this is the second year uh, of that uh, cycle and we have received some questions on how it works in terms of grants. Um, if you are interested uh, you can email grants at cf.us and if you have any questions on um, if you, you know, are you allowed to do a grant, would this be covered by a grant, is this something CIF would um, cover, you know, I would encourage you to use, uh, to, you know, communicate with them or you can also find contact information uh, on the website. But it is the 10th anniversary and I'm sure we'll hear uh, some more on, on the things they've done to support the district. Thank you, Michael. Any other committee reports? Legislative committee? Unless you were nodding to somebody. Uh, no, no, that's okay. Um, I'm, on, I'm the sole member of our legislative committee, and I've been meeting with myself. <laughs> and uh, regrettably, I don't have much to report Those because- must be long meetings. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, congratulations on that is a really See, nasty but clever cut. Very, very clever. And I will remember that. <laughs> but I'm not correcting you. Um, in any event, with that, with that um, <laughs> overture, and um, now I'm completely tongue-tied, uh, <laughs> there, there are at least four major bills being proposed by Governor LePage, which just became printed. Uh, there's been a lot of summaries and speculation as to what they are. We're still trying to meet with our state reps to find out more about it. There are some public hearings coming up. But um, depending on the actual language and what's actually done, they could be very significant in terms of charter schools, allowing school districts to open enrollments to, to students from other districts, which may or may not be good, uh, good because there's some other questions as to whether or not one might be forced to enroll, open your enrollment to students from other districts, yet receive substantially less, I mean, you have to think about it, students from other districts coming to our schools without paying our local taxes, but, uh, and we receive receiving substantially less funding. So there is some very serious issues coming up and we're trying to work with all three of our representatives to get more information and with the Maine School Management Association to get more information. But Meredith, who's the adjunct to my one person committee, <laughs> <laughs> who I don't get to talk to, but apparently that's <laughs> so what? Um, we're, we're trying to keep abreast of that. When we have more, uh, we'll try to keep you informed. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. There are some public hearings um, later this week. Actually, I think tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday on um, 
three of those proposals, and, and one being the charter schools and religious school choice that we'll be keeping an eye on. Um, and we have um, people in other districts who are going up to, um, to testify against those bills. So. I would just add, you know, David brings up the point that we might be um, having to enroll students without receiving tuition from them. There's also a provision that if, if students from this community were to enroll in institutions in other places, we might be required to like pay the private full schools. price if they were to enroll at a private school. Mm -hmm. um, that we would pay the full sum of the tuition and yet we would only receive the state funding through EPS, which is approximately a tenth of our cost to educate a student. We receive about $1,200. I actually feel like I'm a member of a committee now. Me too. Um, <laughs> but the, the point is, it, it appears scary, but I don't want people to think that this is necessarily written in stone yet because it is at the very early stages. And quite frankly, what he's proposing is so radical, our governor, and potentially unconstitutional, it, it's going to be an interesting battle. Mm -hmm. It will be. Can I make one request? I know. Uh, if, if there is a, a deadline or if there's a, a request from someone on the school board to have the school board submit some sort of letter in uh, support or against some of these, if, uh, I know last time we had a pretty tight uh, deadline and we were trying to get it out. So given these are very complicated topics, if someone does choose to uh, request the school board submit a, a letter in uh, defense or uh, against this, if they would, you know, please allows uh, some, you know, several weeks for us to review the information. Um, Sometimes it's difficult because these hearings come up. These hearings were not announced until last week, actually, the end of last week. Um, they sort of, um, you know, put the bills put were only the introduced. Burner. The language for the bills was only made available last week, and the hearings were scheduled to the end of last week. So it's, and, it's difficult. It's a moving target in that sense. And in fairness to the people who, person who drafted it last year, that was done in a day, because that's all the time that one has. Yeah. It, it, is, it is literally, this is how fast we move. Unless we want to hire a professional lobbyist and meet instantaneously, I, I, all we can, uh, quite frankly, all I could as the sole member uh, offer is I'll give the best notice that I can, and that's the best what one can do. Yeah. Meredith. I, I would just encourage um, people to go online and read the language of the bills for themselves um, on the DOE website. Um, they are available there. There's a link. Um, you can certainly go to the legislative um, tabs as well. And then um, the Education Committee who hears these bills, their website, uh, their email addresses, excuse me, are published. So if you um, want to voice your opinion on a particular bill, you can certainly contact those Education Committee members. Okay. Their email addresses. Great. Okay. Thanks, Mary. Okay, anything else? Anyone else for um, committee reports? Um, agenda requests. Any agenda requests for next month? Okay. Um, announcements of upcoming meetings. Um, you, Michael, have already announced the March 20th meeting and the agenda for that um, for finance and budget. Um, when is the next policy meeting? Monday before the next business. Do you have the calendar? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have sorry, it. The 11th, I can tell you in one moment. Okay. Uh, ones with the iPads can answer. It is the 10th. <laughs> which, I'm sorry, which it's the one I the 9th. Okay, April. policy committee oh, meeting, um, yeah, Monday at 7.30 a.m. on um, April 9th. Uh, There's one other meeting that I think Meredith has recently scheduled. It's going to be the 30th with our legislators, which I think would... I don't know if it would technically be a public meeting, but the public is more than welcome to attend. I think yeah, it's on the I 30th. think I've just heard that both the Senate and House have been scheduled to meet now on the 30th. Um, that was the most le recent communication I received today. So that yeah. means the legislative. I just want to tell Michael that I just heard this. I haven't read your emails only hours ago. So this is how fast it changes. Wow, Michael. unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence, we're not meeting on the 30th, and I now have just discovered. Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> okay. Um, with that being said, do I have a motion to, to adjourn, please? I move that we adjourn. Okay. Do I have a second? Okay. Elizabeth? All those in favor? Time zero. Thank you. Aww.